Spe- speaking of father and son, you know, I wish I had a better relationship with my son. It's it's been strained for going on three years this February. It just absolutely kills me not to see him, not to talk to him, not to be part of his life in any way, shape, or form. But I was a proud papa. Let me when he was eleven, uh, I still had a late model, and he had a late model. I had, I was just I had just gotten him into a late model, and oh, really? uh, he we we raced. We only had one, there was only one race where we raced in the same race together. And I started, I started third and he started fourth. But to, you know, back then you had, you could have a national late model series motor and, and it was about 600 horsepower and, or, and you had to have to have a, you could have a smaller spoiler in the back. Or you could have a crate motor, which was only about 400 horsepower, and you could have a bigger spoiler, which would you know be able to, you could be able to enter the corners a little bit faster. But inevitably, having the national late model series motor was what you wanted. You wanted the bigger horsepower, and of course, I had that motor just yeah. because my car was already configured for it. And we threw his car together last minute, and all I had was a crate motor. And going into one, first, take we take the green, going into one, and I just doored the hell out of him. Just put my right rear right oh, on his. Put him in the wall. Yeah, I did. I and was going to ask and, you, and, if and I didn't even, down. I didn't even do it on purpose, <laughs> man. But it was just, you know, it's just the way it, just the way it happens. And so I finished. I actually beat Mark Whitener that night, which is really, really, really rare. I finished third. Whitener finished fourth. I think Keith Knobs bitch won it. I don't know who got second. I got third, uh, Mark Whitener got fourth, and Tyler got fifth. And and if Tyler would have had a car equal to me, he probably would have been competing to win. It was the only – after that, he's like, I'm never racing you again unless we have the same equipment. Well, you adored him. So if it came down to it at that first race and it was between you and him to you know finish first, you would, would, you, would you pretty much spin him out? No, would no. Would you let him win? No, okay. I wouldn't let him win. You know, I mean, I would, I'd just race him hard. But I'm not going to let him win. Okay. And, uh, you know, again, had we had equal equipment, he would have, he, he, he would have absolutely killed me. He, I'm, I never, ever, ever had the racing skill set that he has. I mean, he's, he's, I wish, I wish we had a relationship. I wish we could talk about, you know, all of his racing achieve, achievements because he's so good. He is so good, and he can drive anything, and I and I take pride in that as being the fact that I'm you know I'm the one that got him into racing, and up until a few years ago, you know, still was involved in his race career. Would you credit yourself that you kind of not gave him the skill, but taught him a lot of those? Oh skills? yeah, I mean, I mean, even 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 if he hates me, like I think he does, or or his girlfriend or their family, they all I mean, they all hate me, but even if you in, in hating in, in hating me. If they were to be intellectually yeah, honest, yes, I am the one that from age three to age 21 was his coach, you know, uh, in racing. I'm the one that put to, you know, put him in a quarter midget and, and then and then made the progression up. I mean, I bought Bubba Raceway Park or Ocala Speedway uh, at the time so that at nine, he was nine and I couldn't take him to regular like East Bay or Volusia. Because you got to be 16 to race for insurance purposes. But I got with Tom B, and I'm like, hey, if we buy a racetrack, we can't sue ourselves. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I bought the track for him to be able to have, you know, to have such an advantage on most people. You know, most kids don't get to be able to race on, on a big full-size track with adults until they're, you know, 16. Uh, that's been... Ch- Tyler kind of set the precedent of that. They're getting kids now younger and younger in the sport, but I think Tyler was one of the very first at the age of nine. He was running a you know a 600 horsepower open wheel modified. I felt as if a modified would be the best way to learn. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much motor and not enough tire. So you gotta you gotta draw. You really gotta drive it. Those big late models and sprint cars, they got the biggest tires ever. You got all the grip in the world, but on the modifieds, you got a a big motor and an eight inch tire. 
So it teaches you throttle control and car control. And I really, th- it, starting him off at nine in in that division, I think really had a lot to do with his skill set. And he's, you know, I saw that he won one a couple weeks ago down in New Henry in a sprint car. Uh, I try to keep up with with his race career, but I, I'm blocked. They have me blocked on his Facebook, so I really can't. I really don't know what's going on, and that 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 just it just I I hide it well. I try to do a good show for you every day, um, uh, but boy, I mean you know you have a child, Seth. You have a child, and it's just really tough not to be part of your child's life. As they are a young adult, and you watching them navigate through life, and trying to be with them and love them, and just it's just tough. It just and 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 enjoy the sport that you created for him. You know, I mean, I listen when I when I got him in a sprint when I when I put him in a quarter midget at age three. Don't think that his mom and their family didn't raise all kinds of hell. Like you know, you're I was you're a bad dad. You're trying to kill our kid. You know, but I just kept forging through. Every day we would go to the, every day, he, I would I was doing afternoon drive at the time, Lummy. Every day I would take him out to Balm, Florida, out to Ambassador Go-Kart Track every day, and we would we would practice every day. Every, because I, I didn't have to wow. be, I didn't have to be at work until three o'clock. Yeah. Two o'clock if I was going to prepare for an hour. So we'd get up at, you know, eight and he wasn't in school. Three year three year olds don't go to school. Nope. So we used to call it go kart daycare. That's and so awesome. we'd get up at eight o'clock, be out the track by nine, you know, work we would literally he'd do, you know, a couple hundred laps from nine till noon. Then we'd go to McDonald's, get him you know, his little happy meal chicken nugget deal over there in Sun City Center. That's how I'd get home because I have to take the I'd have to take the sun you know take the I take the Sunshine Skyway south let me then pick up seventy five north to get back up you know to the Balm area and in Sun City Center we'd pick up a Happy Meal that'd be his lunch I'd come home drop him off to to Heather and then uh, take a shower and go to work <sighs> just uh just sucks. It really sucks. I struggle with it. I struggle with it mostly when we have family get togethers because my mom's getting older and, you know, she loved that's her own. That's that's my mom's only grandchild. Now, does Elise have multiple grandchildren? Uh, She has another one. Yeah. Yeah. So from your brother. Yes. Yes. Is that a boy or a girl? Boy. All right. So he's got she's got Sammy's probably the oldest. Yes. Sammy. And then. Your son, your her her grandson from your brother. Yeah. Can you can you imagine just if 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 your grandma only had if your if if your grandma only had one one grand one grandson or one grandchild, and that grandchild will have nothing to do with her. Now now it's not even her fault. It's not really anybody's fault. It's a big. It's just, it's just a big family who done it. That's just. So sad. Well, there's no, there's, there's no clear path to, you know, uh, even a conversation that you guys could have. I've tried. I know. I know. It's just, it's, it's, it's uh, such a, it seems like such an insurmountable, you know, a task as far as just, just contacting him. I've tried to email him on the, on the, on the email that I thought, you know, he uses. I've tried to text him. I've tried to text his girlfriend. I've tried to, you know, people are like, well, you know, just show up at, uh, at, at, you know, I know he lives. I think, I think, I don't know where he lives. I, I don't, but I do know where sometimes he might, I, people that do follow his Facebook sometimes will give me some information and be like, Hey, your son's racing in Volusia this weekend, you know? And there's, there's some people that tell me, you know, just go to the track, but that would, he doesn't want me there. That's just going to be a really awkward well, and situation, he, and you know, and he's when he's at the track, he has to be clear-headed. Yeah, he has to be. You know, you're not you're not talking about a softball game here that you know you could maybe get a line drive to your knees. This is a you know when you're dealing with a sprint car, you're dealing with a, an open wheeled, you know, seven hundred horsepower car that people you know there's six, seven, eight, nine people a year that die in these things, and so I'm not going to go to a race unannounced, uninvited. 
and try to make contact with him, that's just going to get him, you know, he has to be, be in the right mindset to jump in one of these things. And I just, I just don't think that's appropriate. So I, I don't know. Let me, as a, as a dad, do you have any, was it as a dad that has a son, you know, I mean, if you and Walker were, Oof. he's three right now. Yeah. So let's say that you really started honing in on what you wanted Walker to do. Okay, uh, athletically. Yes. Let's say it's, you know, baseball. Yeah. And uh, every day after work, you know, from noon to three, you and Walker, every day, every day, you and Walker are out doing baseball stuff, hitting, cat, just whatever, every day. And then Walker goes on and, and, and starts to, you know, be really good at baseball and starts to get some looks. And then hooks up with a girl at, you know, 18, 19, and she doesn't like you. You and her bat, butt heads. And now, you know, Ashley may step in at, the, at, at that point and, and fix things. But, you know, I'm not with Tyler's mom, Jenna. She's a great person. But I, it's my understanding that she's going through the same thing. Um, I'm friends with her husband, Augie. And he gives me some information here and there. And he's telling me that, you know, he, that Tyler pretty much ignores his mom, too. Jeez. I mean, it's just such a sad... What... what Do you have any advice? Does any does anybody... Rat, well, I wouldn't, show, I mean, I wouldn't Rat, show up at the races. Rat, macho, Rat macho Man, Seth... Uh, chat, chat. All right, I would, I would, I would. I'm looking. I'm even looking at a YouTube chat right now. I wouldn't stop until uh, until he told me to my face that he didn't want to, didn't want to see me anymore, didn't want a relationship. Well, so I told that to me to your face, or like just through text. Text. Nah, I'd want, I'd, I'd want him to say it to my face, and then I, and then I'd realize that uh, I did everything that I could. Yeah, yeah man, make him be a man about yeah, it. Yeah, man to man. If you I don't know, want me, but, but I not do it at a race though. But, but I okay. So how? I cannot predict where he's like I. If I see him at the mall, like I mean, I I, I can I can't. <laughs> well, I'm gonna show up make, after the race, guy. But that's me. Yeah. That's I me. wouldn't do it before the race. You know not to do it before the race. But uh, the only place you know for a fact you're gonna find him is a place you know he's racing after he's done. All right. So you're saying, Rat? You know, know where he's racing. Watch it from the bleachers, because if listen, if if you're a race car driver, you're in the pits. You don't know, you don't know who the guy in the last couple rows or the top, like the, you don't know who's in the grandstands. You just don't. You you don't make a racer never goes to the grandstands. A racer may look up at the grandstands, but you know I'm not gonna. I won't. I won't be all bubble armied out or anything. Or maybe I won't even go to the races until you know it's over. I think the only way he would know you were there is if someone told him. Right. So. Just lay low, maybe not even, maybe just sit in the parking lot until I know his feature is over, right? Yeah, yeah there you go. Sure. Sit in, sit you don't in the have to pay for a ticket at that point. Yeah, well, <laughs> and then, you know, what do I do? Do I do I go up to his car? Do I walk up to his, you know, to his hauler? And well, what do I, what do I do? Hey, what's up? I just say, yeah, I would say welcome hey, to a holler. Hey, holler. hey let's uh, you, you got a second to talk, right? And what if he says no? I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to talk to you. I just he's go. I just wanted to know if this was going to be the extent of our relationship for the rest of our life because I miss you. Your aunt misses you. Your grandmother misses you. And you know, I I I, I don't want this to be something that you know you end up possibly regretting one day. So I just want to make sure you're you're sound in your decision that. Yeah. Uh, you definitely don't want to be part of this family anymore. Yeah, just lay it out there. I mean, the only thing you can do is be honest with him. Let him know how you feel and whatever he does and decides to do, that's his choice. But it, it ultimately gives you closure from your end because right. you can walk away from it knowing you did everything you can do. Right. And I looked at chat and they're like, hey, the Eddie funeral thing was wrong. No, I, I listen, let me explain that real fast before I go to words. So my stepfather, his grandfather, the only grandfather that he really knows. Um, is my stepfather, Jeff, Eddie. And so we're in the middle of this. This is, we're about a year into him not talking to me and Jeff dies. And, you know, at that point, the day before Jeff's funeral, he texts Nana, my mom, and says, you know, what, what, uh, where's Jeff's services at? 
And she said, that's not the place for us to try to fix our relationship. I would prefer you not attend. You didn't know Jeff when he was, you know, for a year you you ignored him. And boy, by the way, him and Eddie, him and Jeff used to, you know, used to go golfing all the time. Like he loved his grandpa. He, him and his grandpa were close. And grand and, and Eddie, his grandpa, for a year tried to get a hold of him and say, please. Please, Tyler, come come talk to, to us. Please come be with us. Stop doing this to our family, please. And so my mom, my mom, I mean, it's it's her husband. It's 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 her husband. She is the one that made that decision. That can't be on me. That that can't be my, my fault. That's not my decision to make. And if she felt as if, you know, showing up at a guy's funeral that you haven't had a relationship with for a year isn't the way that we're going to repair this situation. Isn't so, bad blood so put I, aside I, at funerals? Yeah, but I, but I but I but I I I did I st- I stand by my mom's decision. No, I you, get that. Now now you're making this potentially about us. It, it's not about Tyler and me or Tyler and my mom or Tyler and paying his respects to Eddie. It's all about paying your respects to Eddie. And I, he, you, you just can't be gone from the family for a year. And then when somebody dies, expect that everybody is just going to have open arms and let you back in to pay respects to your grandpa who you didn't have a relationship with for over a year and who begged and begged you to come to Christmas and to Thanksgiving and to Mother's Day and to Easter and all this, all the family events that we get together on begged you to attend only to be ignored i'm sorry you don't get an invitation to his funeral so did he ever did he ever get back or that was that was that no, it? that's it that was all that was it she we've nobody's heard since Tara's tore up over it i'm tore up over it i mean you can you guys know how much it it bugs me 